Today we're going to show you uh, some examples of our deer fencing. And by deer fencing, I mean this is fence we put up to keep primarily deer, but we also use it to keep out other critters such as coons, possum, armadillos, things like that. Hello everybody, my name is Barry Eschenbrenner. I'm a senior farm manager here at the uh, Horticulture and Agroforestry Research Center Farm, New Franklin, Missouri. We constructed this fence you see behind me, beside me, uh, this past winter. In this, we've got one acre of watermelons. We're doing a watermelon field trial here. Uh, and and this, this fence is strictly what we would call a polywire electrified fence. So what we've done is every foot or so, we've taken this product here, it's called polywire. And it, it's, it's electrified, it's very easy to work with, it's very pliable, and we have several strands. And our thinking on this was, if we were low enough to the ground, we could keep uh, such animals as, as raccoons out. And as it gets taller, they would we could keep deer out also because the minute that they're standing here and they touch it, it would zap them. So that's the idea behind this fence. What we use here is poly wire insulators. And I'll show you the insulators. These are, are, are just plastic. They go on a T-post real easy, just like that. They just snap right on, and then you just put your wire on. Great thing about poly wires, if you wanna make your wire tighter, you can just pull the wire and loop it around that insulator. It's real easy, and also if you decide after you build the fence, uh, you, wanna make, you wanna make your wires closer, all you gotta do is do stuff like this. I mean, it's up to you as a producer, so it's really a very flexible fence. We have, I believe these T-posts were eight foot long, so that's kind of a strange T-post. We, ha we, we have them here, so we use them. Here at our ends, we use oil case pipe, and we drive it down as our corners. So we, we do have the luxury of having a, a pipe driver, which goes on a skid loader, um, which makes it very handy. You could drive these with a sledgehammer, but it, it depends, I guess, where you live and how good your soil is, things like that. What we do at gates is we get a situation like this where we just take a normal farm gate and we took rebar and just some plastic netting. This is actually a deer fence on a, a different style we have elsewhere on the farm. And we use that, so this is not electric here but this just allows us in and out of the area that we're trying to protect. It's a continuous loop. So when we, we first start the poly wire, we start there and we go all the way around the entire perimeter and then we just continue that line. So it's a continuous deal on this particular situation. It works great for us. A fence chargers, we get those here locally at a place here in Boonville. We have car batteries that it's hooked to and it's solarized. So the sun recharges our batteries, which recharges the fence charger. Uh, so far, this is the first crop we've grown in this area using this kind of fencing. We have seen no deer damage and we have seen some, something is eaten on some melons, but it's not much. And I don't know what it could be. I'm sure it, it could maybe be a rabbit squirrel i don't really know but whatever it is it's 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 working and that it's pretty it tickles us up pretty good here uh disadvantages to this would be you have to maintain the grass around it you can kind of see back here here's a situation of what we do is we can mow it with a normal lawnmower but this kind of stuff will short out your fence so we either spray that with a glyphosate type product a roundup or you can weed eat it. So as you look down through there, you can see at every post, really we should have that mowed a little bit better, but it is working right now for us. Uh, another drawback is you have to 
have a power source. It can be electric or it can be what we're doing with batteries, but that is an expense. So the minute that you unplug it or turn it off, this is nothing more than just some poly wire. It's not electrified anymore after that, but after that, it, you know, it, when you leave it on, when you leave it on, it, it works fantastic. We've got a box here that we use to protect our, our chargers and our batteries. I don't think this is necessarily a must, but it's just something we did to keep it from, from corroding up like batteries do. Took a little plywood, took a little time. So what we do is we just close it up after we turn it on, and then we have, our, we have a protected unit here. So nothing can mess with it. Another thing I'd add about this fence is the cost of it. How does it compare to the other fences that you're gonna, you'll end up seeing that are on this farm? They're all kind of in the same ball game. Uh, probably the most expensive thing here is gonna be these tall T-posts. And we guessed on how close to put them. If I remember right, we put these at 20 feet. Um, and we, we didn't really know until we started you know, as far as could we pull the poly wire, we wanted to make it look nice, number one, but we wanted it to be effective. Um, so that's kind of why we went that way. We also wanted the height. That's, that's another reason with these tall T-posts. Another thing about this fence is it's not very permanent. If you decide, hey, once, if, if you're growing, let's say like a tree crop, and you decide, okay, I only need this fence for a few years, this, this is great because you can take it down. Or if, you know, or if you're gonna rotate your, your, your vegetable type crops, or this year it's gonna be this, and maybe it goes back to pasture or something in the future, it doesn't take that much to take this down and roll it up. It's, it's, it's not a permanent fence as, as some other fences you're gonna see that are more permanent. So that would be good right there. Thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Mizzou Agroforestry.